Well, can God use past pain to impact lives and is it possible to rebalance your brain after trauma? Dr. Lee Gertis reveals the transformational approach he discovered during his own healing journey. And if you're enjoying Table Talk, be sure to like, comment, subscribe. Remember to click that notification bell to stay up to date on all of our latest posts. So can God bring something good out of your trauma? And what if the worst moment in your life holds the key to bringing healing and deliverance for thousands of others? Could that happen? Well, according to today's guest, this is not only possible, but it's the reality of his very own story. You're going to hear that. But before we get to that, join me around the table is my friend Kelly. And she just got married and your new last name is? Whiting. Whiting, okay. <laughs> All I know is... Kelly Lynch, and so I, I was sitting here thinking, oh, I'm going to say Kelly, and I can't say that. Whiting. So congratulations. Thank yes. you. That's awesome. Thank That's you. awesome. Kelly Kendra Dean, how are you? Hey. <laughs> nice. Nice one, Kelly. I'm doing great. I love these shows. Information yeah. is so important. Yeah. Because God did design our body a very special way. He did. He did. And it's just the more you learn about, the more you say, we have a magnificent creator. Yes. So good. He's so yes. good. So I'm excited to learn today. Anna Kendall, I love if you will, more natural remedies, if you will, to help us because we are yes. fearfully and wonderfully made. And this is going to harmonize us. I, yeah. he I heard him say yeah. that earlier. You and like that. I love Anything that. Anything with music. <laughs> yes. We, We're going to have harmony. We're going to have harmony now within. <laughs> okay. I love that. Cindy Johnston, how are you? I'm doing great. I am so excited yeah. about this guest and the information that we're going to receive and um Fascinating. It's going to be good. Mm -hmm. Cindy Murdoch, we love to hear about anything that can help us oh be better. Oh, my goodness. And I think we're going to be reminded today, God created our bodies to heal themselves. Yeah. Right. We're going to see this amazing I love testimony. That. Mm -hmm. I love that. Well, he mm -hmm. is the creator of the revolutionary procedure known as Sarah said, and he's here to share his story with us. Please welcome Lee Gertis. Welcome. Hey. Thank you. Thank, thank you. you. It's so good to have you here at the table. Do you feel safe with all these ladies? No. <laughs> It's wonderful to have you as sisters in Christ. Yes, yes. It's intimidating to have you as female sisters. <laughs> and in you Christ. understand the female brain. Oh, no, yes. No, we're going oh, yes. to we're gonna get to that. Because I have all of you women watching, I have something very important to tell oh, you. But yeah, this yeah. question is it possible for God to take your pain, your trauma, your brokenness, and bring something beautiful out of it? I mean, that's what happened with Joseph when he's standing before his brothers who had betrayed him. And he said, You meant it for evil. Mm -hmm. But God meant it for good. And God saved, uh, used Joseph to save Israel. Mm -hmm. And so for Lee, that's been a key part of his story. And it's led to some pretty remarkable outcomes. And we're so excited to share what God's done in his life and through his work. We're talking about Sarasit. So you're a physicist, you're a scientist, but you're also a pastor. Mm -hmm. And um, take us back to that fateful day where everything changed and, and there was there was there was I mean some serious trauma that happened in your life. Well it was um, January second, nineteen ninety two, but who's remembering? Yeah. And well you're remembering, so that's pretty good. <laughs> yeah, that's yeah, it was good. about three thirty seven in the afternoon, just to be specific. <laughs> oh wow. Um, oh my goodness. I, I had walked out of a church uh, into around an alleyway to to lock a gate. We had had a program there that we did for HIV affected people that was in the early 90s and they were dying in San Francisco, not very far away. Right. And so the program was one of more of a hospice care and we called it a friendship banquet so we could give them honor as yeah. Christian people so that they could then receive that honor from him yeah. through us. You're just loving, yeah. you're loving them, yeah. serving them. Just, yeah. just yeah. what we do. Yeah. And we had, a, a lot of people helped, but I was locking a gate after one of those dinners, and uh, four youth approached me from behind. One had a baseball bat, and then um, the next thing when I turned, the baseball bat hit me in the head, um, and then it turned me down, and then they were beating me and oh. um, calling me whatever. And um, 
And then I, I was hit twice more with the bat, but besides the other blows. But the third time, it hit me on the right and hit me very hard. So my, my brain, in fact, they had to put some makeup on me today because I got one eyebrow that's kind of more gray than the other one. <laughs> so, <laughs> so they had to eat them out. Okay, so this is terrible. I mean, what happened to you? Did an ambulance come? Yes, it did after I, I fell on the bat and then they took off and I tried to follow and then I got back to the church and then an ambulance came and took me from there to the hospital. So when did you realize that you had like a traumatic brain injury? Um, How were you different after this? Everything changed that quickly. Everything. Wow. Yeah. And you're a physicist. You're a scientist. So did you put it together that what was happening to you was related to this incident? It's hard to explain that you can't put it together. Mm -hmm. It's hard to explain that all at once you have no arms and somebody asks you to pick up this box and you can't. Mm. Wow. You, you just mm. can't. Yeah. Hmm. And then that was the beginning of an eight-year process for me when I didn't sleep. I had headaches on and off. I had dizzy spells on and off. I had brain fog on and off. I couldn't tolerate things. I was at one doctor and one therapist and one psychiatrist, on and on and, and on. And nothing on. was working. No, it got worse. And you, of course, a believer, and this had to seriously question your faith. I was a believer before after I felt betrayed by God, mm -hmm. and therefore I felt like I wasn't, I didn't want anything to do with it. Wow. wow. You know, we just interviewed a brain surgeon yesterday, mm -hmm. and he talked about the four kinds of reactions that people have to trauma. Yeah. And one of them he called a crasher. And he said that's when they, somebody who knows God, loves God, and then mm -hmm. trauma happens, and they just crash and they can't recover. Mm -hmm. And that's what happened with you. And, and a lot of times it's because they feel betrayed by God. Of course, we know that God is still with you through all of this. And you can even look back and see his hand in your life and even protecting you that day that you could have been killed. But when did you have the epiphany that, okay, God, what are you trying to show me? Did, is that when you had the dream or the vision? What you know because you've interviewed many people with the same scenario, they get to the end of the rope. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. And when you're at your end of your rope, what happens? You know the intervention, ultimately, you know an intervention then is only one, from one place. Right, right. And you count on it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And so I did too, but first was that it came from me more slowly. I, I talked to my mother you know, about a year after that. Scientists are harder. I just want to go ahead and tell you that. Uh, <laughs> there are, they are, they try to figure th yeah. God and things out. I'm just, I'm just, is this true? Is this true? Am I speaking the truth? I talked to my mother a year later <laughs> on the phone, you know, and I was saying, Mom, if, she, if, if, if God would just leave something on my answering machine, yeah. I'll do it. Uh -huh. And she said, and I was laughing and she wasn't. And I thought, uh-oh. I've oh, wow. offended her because she's a woman of faith and thinking I made fun. And then she said, son, you've always been a little hard-headed. So maybe a baseball bat was required. Oh, and I said, mother. Wow. <laughs> wow. That wasn't funny either. And, uh, and then she was laughing. Yeah. <laughs> and then we laughed together. Yeah. I loved her so much. Yeah. I mean, she was 102 and a half and died. Oh, wow. oh my goodness. And she told you, I remember you told me earlier that she told you this too will pass, and there will be joy in the morning. She kept telling that, and I said, please don't tell me that anymore mm -hmm. during those eight years. Mm -hmm. And then afterwards, I apologized, of course. Mm -hmm. and, I, and I fell on my knees and mm -hmm. told God. Tell us about that moment. I want to hear about that moment. So I came out of it in terms of, I did many, many sessions then, looking at my brain, and then also trying to help it you know, see itself or fix itself. Nobody else can fix it. Mm -hmm. So if I'm really made in the image of God, show me. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So it did start showing me. Wow. And then I went, 
Whoa. <laughs> but, you knew, but you knew it was supernatural. Oh, yeah. I mean, I mean you it, knew wasn't, that, it, it wasn't my technology. It, was, it wasn't my yeah, idea. Yeah, it was God-inspired <laughs> yes. because of the gift that you have of being yeah. a physicist. So what exactly is this where you used yourself basically as an experiment? I put sensors on my scalp and realized the two hemispheres of my brain were very different. Mm -hmm. And because I, they were so different or asymmetrical, I wanted to help them from everything I'd read to be more working together. More balanced. Exactly, more harmonized. But you, you needed to somehow help your brain see the imbalance so that it could repair itself. Exactly. So I didn't take the high frequencies or the low. I didn't take the left or the right. I took the middle. And like a middle of a teeter-totter or the fulcrum and, mm -hmm. and made it bigger so it could then, if the teeter-totter was like that and you make this bigger, it can help. Mm -hmm. And it did. And I was, whoa. But then I thought, well, it didn't really. It was just... <laughs> Right, just happens to yeah. something. Yeah. The so, reason I'm sleeping better is probably not related. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. So I have to prove this right. now. Yeah. So I spent, you know, the next few years proving the concept. Right. That's scientific work, right? Yes. Prove the concept. Yes. Yeah. So I did. And then uh, along that time, though, it, uh, my heart also reopened. Wow. That's and cool. that's when I fell on my knees. Hmm. That is really maybe what God's saying to you today is that you just had your heart closed. Mm -hmm. And, um, and you know, I can just see God knocking on your heart's door. But whatever has happened, whatever circumstances, whatever trauma, whatever you've been through, you just really closed your heart. I don't know, you may be mad at God. and um, But like Lee did, you know, I'm just praying that today you'll open up your heart mm -hmm. and say, okay, God, I'm willing to give you an opportunity uh, maybe you've known him before, maybe you haven't. And I mean, it's just as simple as saying, God, I need you, Jesus, come into my heart today. It really is that simple, you just saying that. And the onus isn't on me to prove that to you. God is big enough to reveal himself to you, just like he's gonna do with Lee when he shares his story. So th the word I say a lot, y'all hear me say a lot, surrender. And, and that's what you did. You had that surrender moment. What did that look like for people watching? When you come to your spiritual senses, because you can, re remember please, I couldn't do it yeah. before. For eight years I, I was alone or I felt, but then I came and realized, uh-oh, I wasn't alone. Mm -hmm. Uh-oh, <laughs> wasn't me at all. Uh-oh, it was him yes. and that's when I went mm. to my knees. Yes. And that's when I said, okay, huh. I'm yours. And he began to help you develop that technology. Yes. And, 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 and it's like... Little sensors on your scalp with uh, okay. conductive paste. And by the way, it's water soluble, so it comes out of your hair. I'll, I don't have much, so it's not... Yeah. But for y'all, yeah. it's still water soluble. I'm glad you, I'm glad you explained that to the ladies. Yes. We, we need to know that. So you put those on, and what exactly happens with those probes? So those sensors read your brain in various lobes left and, and they do it very fast. And they do it through musical And, and when they read your brain, it goes to a computer and the computer aligns that with the dominant frequency and each of those dominant frequencies has an engineered tone. It sounds like music, but it's actually an engineered tone. And then your brain plays the sound back to itself. Mm. And it's, it's able to readjust and and balance itself based off the way God created totally. really the greatest computer in the world, which That's is our exactly brain. That's exactly correct. Yes. Wow, wow. Let me show you this picture. Here are two different brains that did Sarah said, and this is the before, and they, they went through the treatments, and this is the after. You see how these this right and left lobe aligned the way that God created it to be? I mean, that is so amazing. Mm -hmm. Well, here's one woman's story of how her sessions impacted her. Let's watch this. I was 50 years old and I had pretty much already accepted that I would not live to see 60. I had resigned myself to the fact that I was either gonna die before I turned 60 by stroke, heart attack, or suicide. I had not slept in 11 years, having suffered uh, from PTSD. I am an Air Force veteran. I am also a survivor of childhood trauma, and though I followed my doctor's advice 
for 35 years, taking uh, every antidepressant on time, following every uh, rule, trying every new therapy, trying even, yeah, I had numerous sleep studies, couldn't get the sleep right, uh, talk therapy, a lot of talk therapy over the years. It was in 2019, at the age of 50, uh, that I found out about Saraset. And never in my wildest dreams did I ever hope that I would be so free from the awful experience of post-traumatic stress disorder. It was killing me, slowly. After the second Saraset session, within 15 minutes of leaving the office, I was starting to have memories spill out, memories that had been locked up inside of me for decades start to spill out. I was making realizations and having understanding, making meaning out of what happened to me in a way that just blew my mind. Resetting the brain, which is what Saraset does, helping the brain to relax and realize, hey, it's okay to go back to feeling safe. At the table today, my dear friend of over 20 years, I guess 25 30. years, 30. Gosh, well, what, <laughs> we, we were 10 years old when we became friends, but um, Kelly, you actually have done Sarah said, and of course I've walked with you through a lot of life events. You've walked with me through some as well. And um, I, I know there was trauma. I know you went through a divorce. You were married to an alcoholic mm -hmm. and, there, and you ha were also self-employed. You went mm -hmm. through COVID, everything shut down. I mean, you right. had a lot of trauma going on in your life. All levels are being hit. Yeah. Health. I think I told you about you did. We were, Sarah said. I think we were at dinner, and okay. I just looked at you and I said, I'm just not thinking right. I'm not me. I'm not who I'm supposed to be. And that's when you you said, I remember Doug saying something about Sarah said, and you got on your phone and found a clinic by me. Yeah. Because I decided last year was the year of Kelly. I, I did it last February. I did the first initial, but I, I still go. I go about once a month, once every other month, when I just because I still have a, a lot of stress that I'm still going through, but my, I handle it. How, how did it help you for people who are watching? It was interesting because um, I forgot. I forgot a lot. I told you, I forgot a lot. I didn't even remember that it was four sessions in a row. So um, Doug had said that, and I went, really? And I had to go back and look at the calendar. And um, then I called um, Sonia, who did my sessions, and we just went over it. And she read to me what what I had, my words, what I'd said to her, how I was feeling. And you know, you rate everything in a scale of one to ten, and I was twos, threes, and you know, um, I was in that uh, flight or fright, fight or flight, and then I was frozen, the freeze response. So I was all of those things. It was like I forgot everything because. Now, life is so different. It's just so different. So is your brain just felt like it adjusted and... It did, but it's, it's just a, it's a gradual, normal thing. Yeah. You know, and it's like, even when your sessions are over, your brain's still working. Yeah. And, you know, you go, I go back for tune-ups, but um, it's just a different life. It's, it's... You still, life is life. You still have stress. You still have hardships. You still, yeah. But you, you just handle had, them. You had a calmness that I had never seen before. Mm -hmm. Right. After, right. after you. <laughs> <laughs> because you, I mean, you're high energy, like, go it. get it done, <laughs> you know, <laughs> self-employed, oh, can do a million things at one time. Oh. Now, is this common, what you're hearing her talk about? Yes, but I'm with a number of women and I'm a little intimidated because <laughs> your brains are so much faster than mine. Could you repeat that one more time? <laughs> let, let everybody hear that. All the men out there watching. My husband, Dr. Doug Wise, listen to this. <laughs> what did you say? However, we just heard a testimony too, actually. Yeah. Where your that fast processing time left to right also makes you more vulnerable. So you're saying that our centerpiece of our brain, God created us that we can process and switch back and forth faster 
than men. Mm -hmm. They're slower. Yes. Back and forth. Slower. And but it also sometimes will make us have a greater level of sensitivity because of that quick pace. Precisely. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So with Kelly, she's going back and forth, back and forth, back, and so she's really being affected negatively, and her brain was severely out of balance. So she was, as she explained, she was imbalanced or disharmony happened in low frequencies on one side and high frequencies on the other, which meant she was caught mm -hmm. in the middle. She was caught. She's stuck. Mm -hmm. she, exactly. And that stuckness can represent, first of all, a depressiveness, and next it can also represent an anxiety internally at the same time. Wow. Mm -hmm. And so then she had both. And I don't know you, I don't know your real story, but I would assume if I saw that brain, I could say, oh, that person would have both. It was both. Mm -hmm. Yeah. However, when it harmonized, now all at once, the left and the right can talk with each other very quickly and easily. Mm -hmm. And when that happens, it also means that she can think better, sleep better, mm -hmm. feel more relaxed. And therefore, when we feel more relaxed, what happens? Well, think of it as we are closed one time and then we open the other time. And isn't that what we do when we really worship? Mm -hmm. yeah. We open. Yeah. And so that's that's the beauty of it. Yeah. So what we do, in my opinion, in the technology does, because it's not ours, it's God's, is we help people open yeah. for their own potential. Yeah. Because each of us, each of us is totally unique, so unique that hundreds of millions of fingerprints have never been identified equal. Wow. Mm. And you know, one of the things we talked about is how maybe man would try to fix the brain in somehow a surgery or shock therapy and actually damage the brain in the, in, in the process when in reality, um, this is, is a natural process that just helps the brain look at itself and recalculate and reboot, if you will. And, and it's actually, we're so wonderfully created that God has made our brain in a way that it can repair itself. Yeah. That's what you discovered. My mission from the still small voice was, what am I going to do? Help others. Yeah. Yes. And that's what, that's what our mission statement still is. Yeah. It is a revolutionary technology that Dr. Lee developed, and he himself used it to rebalance his own brain after that terrible attack. If I can find something and I believe in it, you know I'm going to share it with you to try to help you. So here's what they had to say about Sarasat after COVID. My best friend had COVID. They would not allow her to go to the hospital, so she dealt with COVID at home. She has had issues with her hearing. She has issues with memory. She has issues with cognition, being able to focus and stay on task. And this is a year and a half later. I found myself presenting and just going blank. And it was pan, I just panicked. I could no longer do basic math. I, I, I couldn't add basic numbers. At nighttime, I couldn't talk very well. I would stutter. I couldn't move my hands and talk at the same time. It's, it was like there was a huge wall in my head that I could not get around to access words or thoughts. By my third treatment, I was jumping out of bed in the morning, making my bed, opening the blinds, running around, I had more energy than I had pre-COVID. And then on Monday, I started Sarah set. And on Wednesday, my husband said, do you know you haven't stuttered since you've been doing this? And so then I tried moving my hands and I could do it and talk at the same time. By the end of the treatment, I felt stronger, more alert and better driving home than I did um, going there. And I've been able to handle a very, very busy day-to-day -day running um, simulation lab for all my students. And I'm running it, I'm talking the whole day. Something a year ago I couldn't have done. Uh, I was just offered a, a, a very large national role at a new bank because my brain is sharp again. It gave me my life back. 
when the pattern is played back to my brain, my brain can notice where it's in sync and where it's not. And so by listening to the pattern that's been registered from the technology, my brain is slowly resetting itself. It's all happening through the use of music notes. So it's, it's quite wonderful, actually. That's what Saraset does. It gives the brain an opportunity to see itself functioning to recognize that something's not right and, and then fix itself. That's the power of Sarah said. Um, I had COVID and the only thing I really experienced what they called the COVID toes, where there was like a little numbness and it was mainly in the big toe and it went on for a while. Then it, you know, I recovered. I didn't really have a severe case of COVID and um, it was about a week. I told you, I said, well, I, Mine didn't go to the brain, it went like there, and you told me what, and I'm like, what? <laughs> I told you that unfortunately it did, and that <laughs> that's why your toe, because one side of the brain is like a break, and it decreases blood flow, and the other side of the brain is like a gas pedal, and it increases blood flow. In your case, that meant that a very particular area uh, would decrease blood flow. Something put on the brakes to my toe. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. yeah. And We're going to release that. It would leave it no. Yeah. <laughs> That's all the time we have. We all want to keep talking, but I wanted to get that information to you. There's a number on your screen right there. Uh, if you call that number, uh, there is a place right there in uh, a Garden of the Gods, Colorado. If you say Garden of the Gods, Colorado, and uh, they've done a, a ton of these, and that's it. Um, Heart to Heart Counseling Center there in Colorado. And uh, my husband, Dr. Doug Weiss, has seen thousands of people do this. It's amazing. But um, if you're not in Colorado, they can refer you uh, to other places. And, uh, and, and it, might be, it might be an answer to prayer for you. I don't know. So um, just pray about it. And I want you to remember that no matter what you've been through, the Lord can take that pain and brokenness and he can use it to change the world. And that's what he did with Lee. If he could have seen the end of that eight years, what was going to happen, it would have been easy for him to trust God through it. Mm -hmm. He didn't see. He didn't know. And he had, he suffered. But God was still there. And he's like, I'm going to, I'm going to use him if he won't give up. And that's what he's saying to you. Like you might be at that eight year, not maybe technically eight year, but you're like at the end. And uh, it's time to just surrender and say, okay, God, I, I give up. Come in, help me. And, uh, you're going to be shocked at what all God's going to do in the days ahead. Well, if you're watching today, again, you're struggling with past pain or maybe you want God to use what you've been through to impact others. I promise you that he's wanting to do that. Then that toll-free number's on the screen. We have prayer partners that are standing by ready to pray for you. And uh, if you invited Jesus in today, I have something so exciting to share with you. We have the book of John that we'd love to send you. It's a beautiful book because Dr. Gene Getz uh, has done uh, QR codes in here where he teaches on every chapter in the book of John. Helps explain it, helps you understand it. It's a great book to start with, a uh, book of the Bible if you've just prayed that prayer of salvation. So let us know. We'll send you that uh, free book for more on his work. You can call that number, 719-278-3708. And we just want to thank you today. As always, let us know how Table Talk has touched your life. You can leave us a comment on Facebook, X, Instagram, or YouTube. Thank you so much for watching. Thank you, Kelly, for sharing your story. Thank you, ladies. We're all going to, everybody, let's put our hands together. We're going to do it. And we'll see, we'll see you next time. We love you. Thank you, Dr. Lee. Will you come back and, and give us Absolutely. more Absolutely. I'd love okay. to. Yeah. All right. He didn't know I was going to say this, but ladies is available. Oh. But you have to go through me. You have to go through me. It, takes I mean, it could happen. We'll see you next time. Bye-bye for today.